What's up guys, Rui here and welcome back to the channel. As the title suggests, today's video is going to be a very interesting one as I will be taking you guys through my thought process and approach on what I would personally do if I have to rebuild my wardrobe from scratch. Building a wardrobe can be a little bit daunting, especially if you are very new to fashion. There's just so many things to learn and with countless of pieces out there to choose from, all of this can be rather overwhelming. Therefore, after this video, I do hope there is something that you can take away from it to better equip yourself before venturing into this fashion rabbit hole. Since my personal style does lean more towards techwear, I will be talking more from a techwear perspective. However, I did try to make this video as general as possible, therefore it should cater to anyone that is looking into wardrobe building. Although I will be giving some example pieces as it will be easier for me to relate certain key points, the goal of this video is to not really tell you what to buy specifically because I do not want you going in having this mentality or mindset that you need to own this particular piece. The fun of fashion is all about developing and learning more about your personal style, adding your own twist and individuality into your wardrobe. One more thing I have to emphasize is this whole thought process that I will be taking you guys through is of my own and by no means am I saying that this is the only way to build a wardrobe. This is just the approach that I would personally take if I have to rebuild my wardrobe starting from scratch all over again. So do take everything I say here with a grain of salt. As always, before we continue further into today's video, it would be very, very much appreciated if you could go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you are new to the channel or just haven't been subscribed yet as it really does mean the world to me. Also, if you guys are feeling generous and want to help support the channel in a much bigger way, I do have a Patreon page whereby at its lowest tier, it is only a dollar a month. And all of it will go into helping me to pick up new filming equipments so that I can continue to improve the qualities of the videos for you all as well as helping to keep the lights on this channel. Let's first start off with some of the mistakes that I personally made which I would avoid and I think it will benefit the process of building the sooner you understand it. The first is having this mentality of wanting to pick up a lot of pieces within the short period of time. There are many reasons for this such as me being impatient or just me wanting to compete with people on social media that have all these amazing pieces. This is truly not a healthy or a good way to consume fashion as it just kind of creates this endless competition in your head which honestly doesn't benefit any way whatsoever. In reality, building a wardrobe takes time and you have to understand that it's not something that will happen overnight unless you are incredibly rich. High chances those same people you admire took a very long time as well to collect all those pieces and build their wardrobe to where it is today. Always remember that fashion is not a competition and I've been saying this a lot on my channel. Go at your own pace and just enjoy the process. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not, fashion is indeed a very materialistic thing and you really should not get overly caught up with it. My advice is to just spend within your means. Another mistake that I would avoid is going through the fast fashion route. I feel like we've all been through that stage whereby the majority of our clothes consist of pieces from fast fashion as it's the cheapest and also the easiest point of entry for almost anyone. But I do feel like the sooner you are able to move away from consuming fast fashion, the more it will benefit you in developing your personal style. From a techwear standpoint, trying to achieve good functionality within a very cheap price point is usually a recipe for major disaster. Now put aside the integrity and originality of the designs, oftentimes fast fashion pieces usually suffer from poor construction, low quality control, and the functionality isn't as effective as advertised. I truly understand not everyone can can afford designer or high-end brands. But I also don't believe that consuming fast fashion is the solution because it's in their business model that encourages their consumers to turn around their wardrobe at a very rapid pace, which at the end of the day is going to cost you quite a bit as well. Lastly, when starting off, try not to incorporate too many different styles into your wardrobe as you will just end up with this mixed pot of different things that may look good in an outfit, but putting it in a wardrobe, they may not be very cohesive adhesive with each other. Now, if you do have your personal style that you want to develop, that is the best. But if you don't, then I would suggest to try to focus on building a strong foundation first. Everyone's fashion goal or the dream wardrobe is probably going to be different from one another. For me personally, it's the idea of having a small capsule wardrobe that is timeless and prioritizes quality over quantity. 
Hence, in this sense, I'm more about having a wardrobe that isn't affected by trends and it's something that I can see myself wearing for many, many years to come without having to change much of my pieces. No doubt this can be a little bit tricky because ultimately fashion constantly evolves and there will be eventually new pieces out there that are cooler looking, which entices us to buy. This is how the fashion industry works and continues to generate revenue. But this is where the benefit of taking it slow will help me out a lot, as it allows me to not rush into a purchase and be more cautious as to what I do add into my wardrobe. The last thing that I want to feel is having to spend quite a lot of money on a piece and later regret buying it. Again, my wardrobe goal is probably going to be different from yours, but I still do think that it is important to try to figure out and understand what type of wardrobe you are trying to build so that you can curate pieces more effectively. And this may lead into you making better decisions on what to pick up, thus saving you time and money. If you really still don't have a direction, finding your personal style is key here. And I think it is worth it to just take a step back and try to visualize what sort of wardrobe you are trying to achieve here before splurging onto a very expensive piece. I have to emphasize this once again, building a wardrobe takes time and do not rush this process. Before even thinking about all the amazing pieces that I will want to eventually add into my wardrobe, the number one thing that I will do first and foremost is ensuring that I do have a good basic foundation. While they may not necessarily be the most interesting thing to spend your money on, I do feel like they are very important to establish a good base that you can work with. This will provide your wardrobe with so much more versatility, and if you are still trying to figure out what your personal style is, a good base foundation will allow you to kind of experiment with different looks. While every wardrobe fundamentally consists of basic wear, it is not to be confused with essentials because I do not believe that everyone's essentials are the same. Essentials are basically things that are deemed to be must-haves, however, it does vary depending on one's location, lifestyle, as well as the way they dress. So what may very well be essentials for me may not be the case for you. To me, basic wear are kind of the bare minimum one must have in order to cover your body. And that is why it is kind of the building block foundation for many outfits out there. When it comes to basics, Uniqlo is my number one recommendation. And although I did initially say that I will stay away from fast fashion brands, Uniqlo to me is that one exception because unlike a lot of other fast fashion brands, it focuses more towards producing basic everyday wear that are very affordable and for the price that you are paying, the quality is definitely pretty good. Furthermore, from a functional perspective, Uniqlo's Aerosome and Heat Tech technology covers the basis for both hot and cold weather conditions. Alternatively, if you have the extra cash to spare, COS is another very good brand that you can look into, carrying a lot of basic pieces that are much higher quality with better materials. Although they are definitely much more expensive, in the long run, I do believe that it is worth it to invest in higher quality basics. Whichever brand you choose, one advice I can give is don't try to overcomplicate your basic wear. Just focus on the main things such as the quality, color, and cut. In terms of what colors I do choose for my basic wear, I try to keep things very simple and go for more neutral colors as they are probably the easiest to match any outfit as well as it's something that I can wear on a daily basis. For this next part, we will be going through my top process on how I do go about in choosing my bigger statement pieces. And definitely this is where your personal style will start to show. In my case, I will be looking at more tech wear pieces. And when we are looking at kind of pieces from high-end brands, inevitably a lot of them are not going to be cheap. Therefore, I understand that it can be very difficult to pull the trigger, especially if you're still unsure. But for me, since I'm very certain that this is my personal style, I actually think that it's much more wiser if I do have the necessary savings to put it all into, let's say, an acronym piece straight up instead of kind of spreading it across multiple different pieces. Trust me, it will make much more sense later down the video. In terms of what piece I would choose initially, personally I would go for a good quality pair of pants. I think it's the most versatile piece in a wardrobe that can be worn across the year. Unlike a jacket whereby it's a very situational piece that you probably can only wear three-fourths of the year at most. 
find something that you know for sure you are able to utilize a lot. If however I am working with a much smaller budget, my approach is to invest into the best piece that I can find within my budget range and keep the rest of the pieces in my wardrobe very simple but cohesive with that piece just to get things started off and from here I will start to save up until I can afford something from the higher end brands and slowly build my wardrobe this way. In my opinion, this is a much smarter approach to wardrobe building rather than constantly going out and buying cheaper pieces just to kind of scratch the urge of buying new things or just for the sake of choice and variety. Another way to kind of save money in this department is to just wait for the sales period or shop on the secondhand market. Oftentimes, you do get to find some pretty good deals. The key for initially building a small wardrobe is to pick up very versatile pieces which you can constantly wear that will carry you through until you can afford your next big piece. From a functional standpoint, try to avoid focusing on wanting too much functionality, especially within the realm of budget tech wear. In terms of price range, you probably can find some good pieces for less than 200 US dollars. And I would say with a budget of around 500, you could probably build a rather functional wardrobe right from the start. One other way you can further save up initially is to just work with what you currently have. Take some time out of your day to declutter your old wardrobe and keep only the pieces that you can repurpose. This will give you somewhat of a starting base to work with without even spending. Something I want to briefly touch upon because I have covered this in the past which is buying cheaper alternative. Now for me personally, I have kind of outgrown that idea simply because if I do end up purchasing the actual reference piece, the cheaper alternative is going to lose a lot of its significant value to me. Thus, it will no longer provide any value into my wardrobe. Instead, if I were to purchase something cheaper but completely different looking, I now can have more styling options. This next point is something that I truly wish I have discovered during my earlier days because it would have streamlined everything to be so much more simpler, which is to create uniforms. It's actually a term that's being thrown around quite a bit, so what does it actually mean? By definition, a uniform is something that is identical and consistent, which doesn't have much variation to it. Applying this concept into a fashion sense, it's more about a set of outfit that we wear frequently on a daily basis. Oftentimes there's this perception that if you are into fashion, you will need to have tons of clothes as well as constantly keeping up with the latest trends just to fit in into this ever-changing fashion world. Well, the idea of uniform kind of goes against that idea as it encourages you to just stick to one outfit or just a couple with very little variation to them. Within the world of acronym, this is actually not something new. You probably have heard of the term acronym uniform. The classic combination consists of the J1A jacket, the P30A pants, and the occasional 31A messenger bag. This outfit combination is probably the dream outfit for most fans out there, including myself. In fact, the concept of an acronym uniform was also portrayed very well during the acronym Code Evil promotional video back in 2019. They did a very good job in portraying this vision of students learning the acronym Jutsu movements, which are actually movements that you do need a little bit of practice in order to access some of the features found on the jackets, such as the gravity pocket and the quick release mechanism. So how do you actually go about creating a uniform? Well, this is highly dependable on your personal take and what you like to wear. There really is no right or wrong, but some key points of what I think makes a good uniform are outfits that you are comfortable wearing and it's something that you do not need to think much while knowing it still looks good on you. It can range from one outfit or a couple but try to limit it to a very small number just so you do get some variation without overly complicating things. This is particularly important in my opinion because if you are just starting off and with how expensive proper tech wear garments can get, inevitably you won't have many pieces to work with. Therefore, having a uniform that you can constantly rely on helps you to not feel the urge to pick up new pieces just because you do not like or don't know what to wear. In addition to that, there's also a lot of benefits when it comes to having uniforms. For one, you don't really need to think about 
about what to wear, hence saving you a lot of hassle and time when getting ready. Secondly, by adopting the uniform concept, it allows you to pull all of your resources into purchasing that one ultimate grill piece that you really like. As mentioned, for me, I'm the type of person who would rather have that one piece rather than three to four other pieces just for the sake of variety. This is actually something that I have been adopting into the way I dress daily and it has helped me simplify the way I look into my wardrobe so incredibly much as I always have a few outfits that I constantly rotate. And most importantly, this has drastically reduced the urge for me to keep going out and buying new pieces or constantly figuring out what to wear. If you do have trouble coming up with your uniform, from the easiest method is to just take note on what are the pieces that you constantly grab in your wardrobe. There's a very high chance that those pieces are the ones that you are most comfortable wearing, thus those can be your uniform. Today's video is definitely much longer than average, but I do hope if you have stuck all the way to the end, there is something that you can take away from today's video and implement it into your own wardrobe building process. Just remember that wardrobe building really is not something that will happen overnight or within a short period of time. Instead, take that time to learn more about the style that you are interested in and just see how you could implement your own personal twist into your wardrobe. Thank you so incredibly much for taking your time to watch this video. It honestly has consumed almost two weeks of my life just drafting and coming up with the structure for this video. Therefore, I really do hope that you found it useful. Okay, and once again, if you guys are new to the channel or just haven't been subscribed yet, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. And if you have enjoyed watching today's video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It's these little things that really does help to push the channel out to more people. That's all I have for today's video. Please do stay safe out there and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.